I'll give you a classical example, which is also clinically related. Let's suppose there is a woman who is RH negative. You know, some women are RH positive and some women are RH negative. Let's suppose there is a woman who is RH negative and she gets pregnant and unfortunately she is carrying a baby which is RH positive. positive. Of course, that RH positive gene came from paternal side, right? Let's suppose, look at her situation. This is maternal circulation, mother circulation. Her RBCs are RH negative. negative. She does not have RH antigen. And here is the happy baby. Right? And this baby has an RBC which is RH positive. positive. This she is first time pregnant. And this is RH negative mother which is carrying RH positive baby. Now what really happens that during the pregnancy but mostly just after the delivery a little blood from the baby goes to the mother about half ml blood right so what really happens when this first this is the first baby when first baby is delivered when this woman which is RH negative she was carrying RH positive baby fetus and when she delivers first baby at the time of delivery when placenta detaches from the uterus a small amount of fetal blood goes to the mother and then mother this baby is out of course right this first baby is out but during its delivery some of its blood went to mother which was RBCs which are RH positive no fetal RBCs were RH positive this baby has gone out, no trouble to it. But when mother immune system, when mother immune system will receive RH positive RBCs, do you think RH antigen is natural for mother? No. no. So mother will make anti-RH antibodies. Now th this lady who is herself RH negative, but she is carrying which antibodies in her blood? Anti-RH antibodies. She will, not, she will not have any problem herself because her RBCs are RH negative and anti-RH antibodies she has made due to stimulation coming from the first baby, these antibodies will not disturb her. Let's suppose after two years she again become pregnant. Now this is, she is having the second baby. Right? And this baby is also RH positive. This baby is also RH positive, right? But now mother circulation is different. You know the naughty first baby, he stimulated mother immune system on the way when he was out and mother made anti-RH antibodies. So mother was having anti-RH antibodies due to her prior exposure to RH antigen. So when she will be pregnant and carrying the second fetus, anti-RH antibody belong to IgG group and it can cross placenta. So it will come to this baby and this anti-RH antibodies from maternal plasma come to the fetus and bind with the fetal RBCs and destroy them. So when this baby will be born, this baby will have, have anemia, severe anemia because hemolysis is going on because maternal anti-RH antibodies are destroying baby's RBCs. But this second baby also gives some at time of delivery, give some RH positive RBCs and mother immune system now make more anti-RH and trouble is more for the third baby. third baby, you know, life is strange. This time, she is carrying the third baby, I think this must be, right? Why? Because first baby stimulated the mother by giving a little blood and mother made anti-RH antibody. Second baby also gave RH positive RBCs to the mother. Mother made a lot of anti-RH antibodies. And lot of anti-RH antibodies come and now baby's RBCs are destroyed in very seriously. And when the severe destruction of RBCs, then to compensate for these RBCs loss, baby has excessive hematopoiesis and due to excessive hematopoiesis uh, baby's liver and spleen enlarge because you know in the fetus liver and spleen act as hematopoietic organs but by the time of birth most of the hematopoiesis is from the bone marrow 
but because in this baby a lot of destruction of RBCs are going on, so liver and spleen continue their hematopoiesis and they become enlarged due to increase of hematopoiesis and bone marrow also does. So this baby is born with hepatomegaly and splenomegaly and still a lot of what? Severe anemia and lot of these RBCs which are destroyed they are releasing bilirubin, unconjugated bilirubin which may go to the brain of this baby because babies are having, newborn are having immature blood brain barrier. So when these RBCs are rapidly destroyed they release the hemo, uh, they, uh, they release lot of hemoglobin which is eventually releasing bilirubin, breakdown product of RBCs is bilirubin and this heavy amount of bilirubin may cross the blood brain barrier and this may go to the baby's central nervous system destroys cortex and basal ganglia. So this baby will develop really weeping much. This baby will develop uh, mental retardation and motor disorders and problems like this, right? Woman is determined to have more babies. Don't they give them medicine after Yeah, they will. There will be some good doctors like uh, Dr. Gigi will be there <laughs> and she will do some treatment. Yes, we'll talk about this for sure. Now, unfortunately, she was in the third world, not taken care properly. And she is very keen to have more ch children. Now this time what will happen? The real sad thing. Again the baby is RH? Positive. Positive. And what will be the problem with this baby? The mother has so much RH, anti, anti RH, antibodies that very severe destruction of babies, RBCs. And baby has a very large liver, very large spleen. And still very heavy hematopoiesis cannot match the losses of RBCs. So blood become very thick or thin, thin because most of the RBCs are destroyed and heart of the baby fails to maintain the circulation. Is that right? So baby also develop cardiac failure and in advanced classes you will know when someone develop cardiac failure there is generalized edema. So this baby has hepatomegaly, splenomegaly and due to heart failure baby develop generalized edema. And this baby will be very much edematous baby. So we call it hydrops fetalis. Fetus full of water, hydrops fetalis. And mother cannot maybe deliver it through normal birth canal. During this process, either mother will die or some doctor in the third world, he will cut the baby into pieces and bring it out to save the mother life. Or you will do C-section if the facilities are available and bring the baby out but full of water. Is that right? And usually many of these babies die within the uterus. Right? Mother is already having a one child which is mentally retarded and now she has this tragedy. Right? Another problem during this situation occurs that because in these babies hematopoiesis continues, hematopoiesis continues in liver and spleen. Right? Now, hematopoietic function in liver and spleen is different than hematopoiesis in bone marrow. Bone marrow is such a clever organ that it only allows mature product to go into circulation. You are understanding? From bone marrow, when bone marrow is doing hematopoiesis, do you think pro erythroblasts come into circulation? No, only reticulocyte and RBCs come into circulation. Right? So actually, your bone marrow uh, stroma is so much, uh, you can say, uh, so well functional that it only allows the mature RBCs, WGBCs and platelets to go into circulation. But liver and spleen are not so good hematopoietic organs. And if they continue their hematopoiesis for a long time, they allow the precursor cells also to jump into circulation. So in these babies who are born with hematopo continued hematopoiesis in liver and spleen, they have a lot of erythroblasts into their circulation of these babies. When these babies were born, right, doctors took their cord blood and tried to see what is wrong and they found that these fetuses which were having severe jaundice or having hepatosplenomegaly or in severe cases having, what is that? Generalized edema. They found in the blood of these babies or newborn fetus there are a lot of erythroblast because what is the underlying cause for that erythroblastosis present in the blood? Because hematopoiesis are going in liver and spleen and they allow the immature precursors also to come into blood. So doctors at that time when they never understood the mechanism of this disease, they just said this is a disease of a fetus in which lot of erythroblasts are found in the blood. So they called this disease erythroblastosis fetalis. 
What was this disease called? Condition of the baby? Erythroblastosis fetalis. Am I clear?